list of intros, so here you go. So I ran a poll on my Facebook page and my Twitter on what content you guys wanted to see next, and for whatever reason, I'm like... First of all, I get like no votes on anything. I'm literally going to insert that in this video. You guys chose a topic where it was the one that I was trying to upload for literally three weeks and it didn't work. So I'm back at it again for round two. Also, I apologize for this hairdo. Like literally it's either curled or it's this. And I just clearly can't get it together, so this is what we're working with today. I'm just going to get right into it because this is the second time I'm filming this, obviously, so I might just kind of go for the main points at this point and not drag it out to a 20 minute long video like the last one that wouldn't upload was. So, um, here is me and Tom's story. So he was a boy, she was a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? We actually have to rewind about seven or eight years now. Tom and I actually met, we had like mutual friends and him and the mutual friends would Skype and actually I was there during one of those times. So I was kind of like, this is really, really cool. And like he has a British accent. And at the time I was like 16, like knowing somebody with, with like a British accent was like super, super cool. Like unheard of out there. So I was like, okay, so we're just gonna be best friends now and you're gonna have to deal with it, which Tom obviously loved. And so yeah, over the course of like maybe two years of me just being super annoying because obviously 16 year old girl, British guy, that equals just annoyance. And it wasn't even like for a romantic purpose. It was just like, oh my gosh, I have like a British friend that is so flipping cool. And at the time we were both in relationships. So it honestly started out completely innocent. There was nothing really going on there. I think we probably got on each other's nerves more than anything else. Um, so that's just kind of how like our friendship had started. And then, you know, like another year or two goes by and I had, you know, then, it's just so rude, so rude. Then, you know, I had split from my boyfriend, I left high school, um, and I was kinda like, hmm, you're British and we're really close friends, hello? Hello? I would literally be stupid <laughs> if I denied any sort of feeling at that point. Cause you know, you start to develop a close friendship when you go through a breakup and when stuff in your life happens, then you start opening up and that's what we did. We became very close friends as we both got older and he was just like my rock to lean on. And then I was like, and I was just like, wow, I kind of, I, I could see it and you're also cute. So that helps. But, you know, I shouldn't have said anything, but Tom was still with his girlfriend at the time and he was like, no way, Jose. So then I respectfully backed off and waited until they were split and then we were like, hey, let's give it a try, why not? And we failed miserably. Like looking at us now, you wouldn't think that, oh, you know, they've been friends for all this time and they failed at like trying to be in a relationship because Let's be real, me and Tom, like, I, in my opinion, we have reached, like, goal status from, like, all the effort and work we've put into our relationship, but it didn't start off like that. It was actually kind of not that great, and with a five-hour difference between, like, you know, our different time zones and everything, and us not being in a solid relationship, because, like, we had never met in person before, it was very challenging, and we just couldn't, like, follow through with it. And I'm not proud of saying this but I have to include it because it's part of the story. I saw something that I did not like and I perceived differently and made a whole like Twitter thing about it. Um, I thought Tom was like hitting on somebody else and like not taking us seriously. And he had a plane ticket to come see me like of the Christmas of 2015 or something. And I was just like, do not enter, don't come. Like, I don't want you to come see me if you don't take this seriously. And then I like just totally like blocked him on everything and I look back and I'm like, Lindsay, that was so immature. Like, you should have just talked to him. But also at the same time, like I had given my heart to somebody that I knew for so long and trusted and honestly I thought I like loved. 
And so to see something, I was just kind of like, all right, well, I'm shattered into a million pieces, so don't talk to me. Give this video a like if you're somebody where if someone screws you over, you're just kind of like done. You just kind of shut it all down because same. And normally I give that person a chance to stick up for themselves. But at this point in my life, like I was 19 at the time, and I was just like, I do not have time to be screwed over in my life because it's happened to me way too many times. So if you're just gonna add yourself to the list, like, bye bye have a nice life. And then he ended up getting into a motorcycle accident later that year. And I was like, great, I actually still really care for him. Like, I don't want anything bad to happen to him. So of course I reached out and apologized. And it took a little bit of time, but we started working our way back to a friendship. And then New Year's came. So for New Year's, I had a little bit of liquid confidence. Sorry, mom. Like once New Year's hit, I, you know, of course you do the whole like, see who texts you right at midnight and then like send out texts to people that like you really want to reach out to. I messaged him and I kind of like word vomited my feelings and that kind of sparked something again between us. And it wasn't until March of 2016 when things really started like buckling down and getting serious. We were like, okay, if we're gonna do this, we have to do it right. Like we decided that Tom was gonna fly over and like spend time with me. And if everything like worked out, like we were gonna be together and just figure out the long distance thing. And we even talked about like marriage like that soon because I was like, listen, you're like my soulmate. Like I do love you, but we obviously can't confirm that until it's all becoming real. But I was like, I could see this being it. And we were on the same page. It was actually kind of weird to be able to fluently talk like that with somebody that was just like, it's just so fluid with. Like if you are with that right person right now, you totally get what I'm talking about. It's just like, You've known them forever and you're confident with what's going on. So that's like where we were at that point. May of 2016 comes and he flies over to see me and me and my BFF Paige, we went to the airport, we picked him up and I kid you not, it was the actual best day of my life. The best day. I know our marriage and engagement was super important, but like if we didn't have that first day, none of these other days would be possible. Now, at the Orlando airport, every time we get the chance to be there, and obviously it's harder for us now because we're living in South Carolina, but every time we're there, we go by the terminal that like I first ran up to him and like practically jumped on him because I was so freaking excited to see like the love of my life in the flesh. He was perfect and everything that I wanted and more. Like, we always go by and I'm like, oh my God, it's our spot. I'm just saying, for all you girls that are watching Love Actually and you know the whole intro is the airport thing and there's a lot of love in airports, it's the truth because our love story physically began in an airport and it is so romantic and I love telling the story and I love posting the pictures. I'll probably insert it next. <sighs> I love, I just, it's like, when you meet the love of your life, and I know this is not the case for everyone because not everyone has internet relationships that have been friends for years and years and years, but like it is the best feeling to be like, oh my god, it's you. And like, this is it. Like, I knew from right there, that first hug, I was like, I am ruined for all other men. I am <laughs> ruined for the rest of my life. I was like, I have to marry this man. And like, I know that sounds crazy just from like a hug. But it's like when you have all of this background over years, it's like, finally, like, I've got you, I've seeked you out for a long time, and I've got it, and I'm not letting go anytime soon. You have to pry it from my dead hands. We, two days later, immediately started officially dating. It was, like, amazing. And, you know, young love, puppy love, beginning of the relationship. Obviously things feel a little bit different now, but not in a negative way. It's because we've both um, matured together and like marriage and moving out and handling like actual adult things makes you mature together and like I appreciate that aspect of our relationship now. The puppy love thing at the beginning and what is it, the honeymoon stage, like it's just, it's one of my favorite things to like think back on because I'm like, oh my gosh, we didn't have any responsibilities, like that was crazy and amazing. Um, 
but yeah, we wasted no time. He was with me for a month, and then he, like, flew back home, and we were separated for about another two or so, and then he came back for three, and within that time, we had planned, like, a random, like, weekend trip to New Jersey to go stay with my aunt and uncle and cousin. Shout out. I know, Blake, you're watching. Hey, you're part of the story. <laughs> While we were there, one of the full days that we had, we were gonna go walk around New York because I had been, but Tom obviously has never been. So I was like, this would be the perfect time to do that. Like, hello, we're right next to the Big Apple. We may as well spend all day walking around and doing the touristy stuff. You know, of course we went like to the Museum of Natural History, Central Park. We went to Times Square and went on like the red steps. We had to do it all, of course. Later in that day, when we were at the Empire State Building, we were up on, I don't even know what it is, 86th floor? I'll have to look it up and insert it. But the number, this floor, he proposed to me. Um, we were facing Central Park. The sun was going down. He kept asking me to like, oh, can we go around one more time? Okay. Accurate. He obviously sounds that way. I was like, this is so weird because we've been here for like an hour and there's only so much to see, but okay, let's take it all in again. So he did not get on like a knee because it was extremely crowded as we can all know, but he got really, really close to my face and he pulled out a ring and asked me if I would be his wife and I was like, Ugh. clearly I said no. <laughs> so then began our immigration paperwork. I bet you didn't see that next, but you know, Tom's from a different country and we had to decide, okay, well, who's gonna go where? So we eventually decided on him coming here. He just has always wanted to be in America and I, at the time, was not comfortable like leaving my little box of like comfort. Um, so he moved here and we started that process and we ended up having an actual courthouse wedding in April of 2017 and it was really intimate. It was like my mom and her boyfriend at the time and that was it. And we went to our favorite diner, Metro Diner in Palm Coast, and we just pigged out. And people could tell that we just got married because he was all dressed up, I was in white, and people could just tell. So it was a great day. It was like a great, glowing, amazing day. We actually threw a separate ceremony and reception. Um, we had it at Washington Oak State Park. I don't know if any of you guys like know even remotely what that is. Those of you that attended will. But it's in Palm Coast. We were living in Palm Coast for almost a year at the time. We got married there on June 4th of last year. So we've passed our first wedding anniversary. We've actually been together for almost three years. Um, so it's been a great whirlwind of an experience. It's been a lot. It's been a crazy long winded journey, but I clearly would not want to do that with anyone else. And I'm not normally one to take chances, but I was so willing to take a chance on him because I knew he was my future. It just makes me so mad when people say like long distance is too hard and like they can't do it because I'm like, try having like a time difference and like when the other one's going to bed, the other one's almost waking up and then like your work schedules don't line up and it's just, it's very difficult. And if it wasn't like maybe we would have lasted through that first time a long time ago, but it's very difficult. And I think as long as you put in the effort and like the emotion and communication, it builds a trust and it makes it possible. And if you're not serious, if that's not your person, then you are wasting your time. I mean, that's me and Tom's story pretty much. I mean, of course there's a bunch of stuff like kind of in between there that's super cute but i could honestly go on and on for days about it but i don't have that time for a video right now <laughs> we're two years later into our immigration process we've just gone for our green card interview um and happily enough once he gets his medical like exam updated because i guess the original one from our fiance visa has expired by now. So once he gets that all done in January, then he officially gets a conditional green card for two years. And I won't get all into it, but if you guys want a, another video on like our immigration process and like what we've gone through and the amount of paperwork, blah, 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 give me a like and a comment and let me know. Um, Cause I can do a video on that too. I've learned a lot about how to file paperwork and pretty much become our own lawyer for that. Um, but again, if you guys want a video, leave a like and I will do so. Thank you all so much for watching today. I really do appreciate it. And I am a little down that nobody really shares or participates in votes. I think if y'all participate, it just, 
I get a clear image on what you really want to see. So please, please, please follow my Twitter and my Facebook page. I'll leave all the info right at the end for you. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoy what you see. So until next time, peace out.